On this day dedicated to giving thanks, we want to introduce you to a young man whose story is a testament to the power of friendship and the strength of the spirit. His name is Darius Weems and his life has been an incredible and some might say nearly impossible journey. He lives each day with a devastating disease, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and yet he's one of the most positive and inspiring people we've ever met. We're headed off on an unexpected adventure. It's hard to believe all of this started as a road trip between friends. It's mayhem, kind of like Beetle Mania. <laughs> <laughs> Darius goes Beetle. But seven years and many, many miles later, it's turned into this. <laughs> a lesson about life from a guy who knows firsthand how precious every day is. And in rural South China, Maine, they are very happy he is here. It isn't the Fab Four bringing down the house on this rainy Tuesday, but a fella named Darius Weems. Here you are, a kid from Athens, Georgia, in a wheelchair in the middle of Maine, right? Yeah. And they are going out of their minds. From time to time, I had to pinch myself in come back to reality. These kids are going like mayhem. I thought they was going to pick the van up or something. So. Darius invited us to spend a couple of days on his Believe Tour, where he visits schools around the country, inspiring kids to believe if he can achieve his dreams, so can they. Darius suffers from Duchenne muscular dystrophy, a genetic disorder that affects one in 3,500 boys around the world resulting in the disintegration of muscle tissue. Legs and arms are seized, and eventually so are the muscles that surround the heart. In the U.S., the average Duchenne sufferer dies by 25. Let's get this party started! The disease killed his older brother at 19. Darius is 22, and he is resolved to fight with everything he's got. My brother, when his life kind of slowed down, and Seeing him lead the world kind of changed my life. For him, it's been a slow but steady progression. He could walk when he was a kid, but around age nine, he transitioned to a walker. A wheelchair came at age 12. Now he can only wiggle his fingers and feet. I got a heart for the pain. But of course, his mouth works just fine. From the to the belly, like he spends a lot of his time writing rap. We first met Darius back in 2007, when my then Nightline colleague Martin Bashir spent some time with him. Martin had a particular interest in Darius and his disease. My brother died when he was 29. Your brother died when he was 19. Do you worry at all about the future? The more that you appreciate your life, the more that you get out of it. Logan Smalley knew Darius was a special kid. He'd been a counselor at a camp Darius's brother Mario attended. Before Mario died, he asked Logan to watch over his little brother. Tell me when it first occurred to you that maybe Darius should go west. Yeah, it was Darius his mom and myself, and we were watching MTV. So you want to be a player, but your wheels ain't fly. And we jokingly said, you know, we should get your wheelchair customized on MTV. And then about 30 seconds passed, and then we said, whoa, this is a real story. We should really film this thing and, and make a movie to raise awareness for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So at 15, Darius took an extraordinary journey across America with Logan and a bunch of guys. <laughs> I'm in a wheelchair, but I'm just like a regular person. Never think I'm like somebody else. I'm just the same as other people. I got talents. The journey became a film. Darius goes west. It was the first time Darius had ever left his hometown of Athens, Georgia. How did he talk your mother into it? Oh, it was it was hard. She didn't want to let me go. But I mean, it was a pretty crazy idea if you think yeah, about it. Most of us was like stealing our teens. It's just something that you gotta see. They traveled to the Grand Canyon. Feeling like I'm king of the world. Where the view brought tears to his eyes. And to the ocean. <laughs> where Darius stood up for the first time in almost four years. 
MTV never did pimp his wheelchair, but the trip was a success. The journey turned out to be one about gratitude, about giving thanks, about giving back, and about two young men who couldn't be more different on the outside or more alike on the inside. What do you think you've given Logan? I think we give each other things like with him actually taking on the goal of watching over me when my brother passed away. Logan seen me grow up from when I was five years old to the man that I am now, so I definitely think he's proud of what I have became. So I asked Darius what he felt he had given you. What have you given him? Darius and I have a mutual respect for each other, I think. It's some strange mixture of brotherhood, parenthood, old married couple, best friends, like, our relationship runs the gambit, and you know, I love him more than anybody. And uh, we just have so much fun together, and, and it feels really good because it feels like we are making a difference. And that is really the strength of the film, the power of their friendship, the power of their belief in one another. Darius has even written a song about it. It's called Believe. Through the years, Darius and Logan have also given each other a lot of laughs. One of the most poignant moments in the film happens by accident. Visiting the San Francisco Zoo, Darius's pals dare him to eat a spoonful of wasabi, known to be super hot, but something he's never heard of before and that he clearly can't pronounce. They bet me like $10 to eat some good sloppy sauce. I can't say it. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> he takes the challenge. When I saw the film and, I, and that scene starts to play out, I was very unhappy that they were having you do that. Oh, um, I felt like they were picking on you. And then as I watched it unfold, I realized that they were treating you just like everybody else. When we was filming, it was a lady like by us and she thought they was picking on me and stuff like that. So I think, it, like you said, it shows a good message and just treat me like others. He's just one of the guys and it's that scene perhaps more than any other that captivates the kids in the schools they travel to. In fact, it's become a popular way to raise money for medical research for Duchesne. Nothing more fun for a group of high school students than having their own Goslabi challenge. Oh my God! Darius smiles every time. So far, Darius has raised more than two million dollars for the cause, much of it to the sound of laughter. So when we saw you in the movie, we saw kind of what life was like. Uh huh. Are you physically a little bit worse than that? Well, I would say like physically, I'm still able to do most of the stuff that I did um, during the making of the movie. Um, over the years, I kind of developed like a heart problem. I had to go on a low sodium diet to keep my heart function right. So I'm still doing pretty good. And we're getting close to a cure. Yeah, definitely. Um, actually, me, myself, I'm in a clinical trial in John Hopkins and never did I think in my lifetime I would still be alive or being able to be in the clinical trial.